Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. I get the feeling that woman wasn't the Karen in this duo. Her husband got that role in our first story. Often, one has just become so familiar with the actions of their partner that they ape the bad behavior without realizing. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. We'll be gone before you know it. Chill out. Hello all, hopefully this story gets approved. I've had many odd jobs and working for the Colorado Grand has been the most, well, interesting. And yes, I work at the timeshare location I own, points at linen department. Among other odd jobs, I'm essentially a floater filling in as needed. Not as fun as it sounds. So I'm on a smoke break and the area I'm in needs to be free of cars. Signage is up about the linen loading zone. I literally just lit up when Bob and Karen McCarenstein pull up right in front of me, two feet from my knee. Fully in the loading zone that's about to have a truck pull in. This dude, Manny, is like clockwork. He pulls his truck up for loading, takes a lunch, loads up, and leaves. I quickly leap to my feet and drop my $2 cigarette and do the double arm wave, letting them know that they can't park here. Karen rolls down her window as Sweaty Bob leans over, saying, We'll be gone before you know it, okay? So STFU and chill out, okay? Okay. I see Manny pulling in like clockwork. I see Bob see Manny all in a panic. I see Manny see me with a smile on my face looking at him. He knows what to do. He pulls up as far as possible for loading, blocking panic Bob in as he's trying to grumble around his ignition. I can swear Bob was talking to me, but I was told to STFU, so what's the point? I then turn and walk to the ice machine a ways away, get a drink, and chill out. I even got my personal fan, knowing it's a hot one. We load up, taking our time as Manny eats his Jimmy John's, chilling all the while. I could have taken an hour plus, but we decided after 25 minutes and an irate Karen unleashing her vengeance on Bob instead of us to let them out. Bob was literally the first person I've seen with sheepishness on his face. <laughs> Priceless. And our second story. I didn't ask what you think. Okay. In the late 1980s, my first job was working at a well-known fast food chain. I'd been working here a couple of years at the time of this story and had worked my way to crew leader, but had just been passed over for a promotion to shift manager three days before. It's around 7 p.m. and we'd just finished the dinner rush and the newly promoted manager, Kate, decided to save some labor and send the bulk of the crew home and just keep the closing crew. We had one person covering drive through one person in the grill, me, one person at the front counter, and Kate. At this point, it's important to know that this fast food chain was running a promotion for their most famous hamburger item, two for two dollars, and of course this was very popular. With one employee in the grill area and the equipment and prep methods that were used at this time, it was possible to make this item six at a time. We had code names for cranking out these items from the grill area at speed. Six pull six meant that you make six of this item and when you finish making these six times, you started the next six. With this method, you can make about six menu items every two and a half minutes. Six turn six meant you start six of this item, and when you flip the meat on the grill, you start making six more. With this method, you can make six items every 75 to 80 seconds. So what happens 10 minutes after Kate sends the bulk of the crew home? We get a large Greyhound bus full of senior citizens that walk into the restaurant. About 80 people flood the lobby and start lining up to place their orders. From the grill area, I see the flood of people, assess the situation, and decide to start making some food. However, I choose not to make our hot sale item since I don't think the bulk of these customers will order this. I decide to make fish, chicken, and smaller hamburger items, which I believe this group of people will order. Just as I finish delivering the first wave of these smaller items and about to start another, Kate pokes her head out of the office and notices the situation. Obviously, the lone front counter person was overwhelmed, and Kate rushes to help take orders. On her way to the front counter, she yells to me in the grill area, Kate, I want you to do a six turn six until I tell you to stop. Me, I don't think these guys are going to be ordering that, are you sure? Kate, I didn't ask what you think. They made me the manager, not you, and this is what needs to be done. Time for malicious compliance. I start to crank out the burgers and don't bother to wrap them up. I'm working furiously and get into a rhythm. 
turning out six of these every 75 to 80 seconds. About 15 minutes pass and there were about 60 burgers made with only me on the grill. There isn't time for me to box the burgers and put them in the bin. I'm stacking trays of finished burgers on any flat surface I can find in the grill area. Kate's still taking orders at the front counter. She hasn't noticed how many burgers are piling up in the grill area. At this point, I decide to ask her if she wants me to continue. Me. You still want me to do six turn six? Kate. Did I tell you to stop? Huh. Well, she's taking the customer's order, so she must know what's going on. I go back to the six turn six. Another 20 minutes pass, there are now another 90 burgers, and I'm putting trays of finished burgers in the sink area, straddling fryer vats, etc., and she still hasn't told me to stop. At this point, all the customer orders are taken, and they're now trying to get orders out. The smaller fish, chicken, and burger items are long gone by now, and I've had no time to make any more. NMP yells back to me. Kate, we need chicken, fish, nuggets, hamburgers, and cheeseburgers. Me, so you want me to stop the six turn six? Kate, what? You're still doing that? Are you crazy? Me, you didn't tell me to stop. I'm doing exactly what you asked me to do. At this point, she walks back to the grill area and sees the fruits of my labor. There are burger trays everywhere. The prep table is a disaster. The grill needs to be clean, and I can't even get to the fry vats to make chicken or fish since there are burgers stacked on them. Kate, I can't believe you did this. We're never going to sell all of this. This will ruin my food waste goals. Me. I specifically told you that I didn't think a six turn six was a good idea, and you told me to do it anyway. I asked you if I should stop, and you told me to continue. They made you the manager, so I assumed you knew what you were doing. Kate, you did this on purpose. Me. I did exactly what you told me to do, so yes, it was on purpose. Kate then storms back to the front counter, and I start packaging burgers and making the food that was actually ordered to fill the customer orders. She didn't speak to me for the rest of the night. The next day, the store manager asked me what happened, and I told him exactly what I was instructed to do. The front counter person was able to verify the instructions that were given, and I never heard anything more about it. The Kate was transferred to another store shortly after this, and I was promoted. Ah, this is a lovely read. She got a bit of an attitude with her position of power. You humbly knocked her down a peg. And our next story. Resort managers now being obligated to decorate entire public areas of resort instead of outside company. Three years ago, while working at a large resort in Colorado, our general manager decided to try and save some money in Q4 at year end. He did this by not hiring the outside company we use for Christmas decorations and instead made all of us managers sign up for multiple two-hour blocks to decorate since most of our decorations we owned in-house. Well, we were a lodge-style resort with rafters all over. This meant fluffing and decorating multiple trees for our 30,000 square feet of meeting space and hanging the icicle lights with a staple gun on every stupid bullcrap rafter. Nobody wanted to do this, not even the engineering crew. We all had so much to do in this period, like preparing for banquets and holiday parties each night, sales coordinating these functions with clients, front desk crazy busy all hours of the day, etc. So in the end, we all decorated. Nobody said how well it needed to look, so it was probably said, but appearance is subjective, and the outcome was tumultuous. The front desk manager staple gunned his thumb twice while putting up those lights, had to be out for a few days, took twice the time to check people in when he was on desk thereafter. The sales department decorated trees on only the facing sides, and awfully, I might add. So sparse on ornaments, it looked like a tree decorated in a halfway house. Then we went up in the attic and found these old Peanuts Christmas decorations from probably 20 years ago that were unanimously decided to be placed all over the lobby areas. We were in a Ford Diamond Resort with Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and Peppermint Patty in the tackiest areas we found. The one thing I did that was cool was I made a wine rack advent calendar for the restaurant. I told them I gifted a cheap bottle of wine each night to a random guest who had a pretty high check, but tried it once and the guest was weirded out and thought I was effing with them, so I just gave them out to my friends at home. Needless to say, GM was furious and couldn't discipline everyone, so we hired the company back not only to remove the decorations, but to fix the crap poor job we'd all done and everyone gloomily went back to their normal jobs. I never experienced a better team building exercise than coming together for a cause of not decorating since the majority of us do it at home already anyways. 
And our last story. I can't park on your campsite? Okay. Camping for 10 days. My husband has a last minute work trip and I have an appointment on first day. He drives up with a 22 foot camper, sets up and then drives to airport. It's a hassle and a half because folks in the next site are spread all over and he doesn't want to bother them. It takes two hours, but he gets camper situated without disturbing anyone. Only thing is because folks next door are so spread out, there's no place to put our car. So husband asks two sites over if he can park on the unused section of their site. I drive up next day. I park in suggested spot and run into camper for another doctor appointment. 45 minutes later, I come out to a park ranger at my door. Seems folks next door complained about my truck. It's partially on their lot and they want it moved. I tell ranger who's stealing for a fight that I'd park on my lot, but the complainers are over the line by a good foot or two. So I DK where to put my vehicle. Ranger marches over and makes complainers move their camper and crap that's on my lot. When they're done, I say, thank you, that looks great, only to have, well, as long as you're happy, snapped at me. I look at the guy, then turn to his kids and tell them to get off my picnic table and go to their own. And don't forget your toys. You're lucky they complained about you. They probably would have gone crazy if you complained about them. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.